<clears throat> You're good, Kelly? Yeah. What's wrong? Uh, where do you want your phone? Miss Amanda. Amanda! So, we wanted to catch up with you about BART. Uh, yeah, I talked to their attorney. They're saying they're not going to give you anything. They're claiming they're all exempt. So at this point, BART isn't going to give us any anything. surveillance? Nope, no. We're, if we're going to try and get them, it's probably going to require some sort of litigation. We have been talking to writers here and online who've seen and experienced some pretty unusual and sometimes scary stuff on BART. And many things sharing their stories and raising awareness can help protect other passengers. It was getting late. We exited the BART station and we were met with a group of really hostile, really high homeless people. And this was the first time I had ever seen anybody smoke crack on a train. So on my train we stopped and then after a little delay I found out and I could actually hear it that there was a guy above me like standing on the train. It made us feel really uneasy and uh, really uncomfortable and actually really unsafe. So we just jumped in an Uber and got out of there. Apparently he was screaming like I'm, I'm king of the mountain, something of that sort and it was a little scary hearing somebody up there. If people share their experiences of using the BART it would be helpful for people like us who are visiting San Francisco to plan our trips better. While a lot of passengers are eager to share their crime stories, some aren't so sure Bart wants you to hear about it. Give her her phone! Give her her phone! I've seen people turning it into a toilet. I've seen sh all over the floor. I've seen people shooting up needles on the ground. Ben Friedland is driven by data. He's a software engineer who was inspired two years ago when BART removed detailed crime reports off its website and replaced those logs with maps that contained far fewer details about crimes. And that's what pushed Friedland to create BARTCrimes.com, a website that lets riders read a detailed account about major crimes all across the transportation system. Their being tight-lipped is just making it more dangerous for people who want to be safe. But crime logs aren't the only thing BART seems hesitant to share. We wanted to get a sense of what kinds of threats passengers have actually faced on BART. So back in July, my producer, Kevin Nias, submitted a request for BART's own surveillance footage of crimes. These are videos that were used to close more than 100 criminal cases. So again, these are crimes that are no longer under investigation. And because BART is a public agency, it has to comply with requests for public records. But BART wouldn't give us the videos. It argued the footage was exempt. So we got our attorney involved. Miss Amanda. That's our attorney, Amanda Leith. She's senior counsel for NBC News in New York. So we wanted to catch up with you about BART. Uh, yeah, I talked to their attorney. So at this point, BART isn't going to give us any Anything. surveillance? No, nope. if we're going to try and get them, it's probably going to require uh, some sort of litigation. They are taking the position that they are still exempt under 6254F. As you know, they take the position that doesn't terminate even when the investigations are over. Now, that, that exemption, does that mean that they cannot give it to us, or does that mean that it gives them the choice to not give it to us? Uh, it's a little of both. I mean, it means they, they don't have to give it to you because, as I said, it doesn't terminate when the investigation does. That being said, our argument was that it, it isn't clearly exempt because these weren't videos that were created for the investigation. At one point, it seemed like they were going to give us the videos. Did something just change? I agree with you. That was the impression I got on the first response from him. Um, but then he kept saying he had to have meetings with people, that he was going to be consulting with people. And that was the response I got after that meeting. All right. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. All right. Take care. So nothing. Disappointing, but not surprising. It's interesting because both the police chief and the new general manager of BART told us at one point that they were one of the most transparent organizations out there. I mean, we're, we're all about being transparent. 
Uh, we put our information out there. We don't hide from anybody. We have a citizens review board that we report out to every month. We have a office of independent police auditor that also reviews our policies and procedures. So we're transparent. We put all our information on our website. Our policies and procedures are out there. So we're not trying to hide anything. We've talked to riders who feel that BART is largely trying to downplay crimes within the system by removing data from the website. They've cited denials at their request for surveillance videos and even actually discouraging people from filing police reports. So I guess sort of big picture, if you support being more transparent, why has BART seemingly taken steps to keep information from the public? I'm not aware of that. Uh, I, I know when, when we get public records requests and, and we're able to produce that information, we, we do it. Uh, some of the stuff with regards to videos, they're active investigations and some of that stuff we just can't release. Our team is still working to get those surveillance videos from BART. But we were able to get our hands on something else. The price tag for these tiny and temporary silver barriers that were supposed to keep non-paying riders out. We've discovered BART paid $84,000 for just two months of use. So did the barriers work? Or were they just a really expensive bad idea? Next time on Derailed. For a lot of passengers, those changes frankly looked laughable. Did you honestly think those gates would, would make a difference? It's just, it's a prototype, stuff that they're just putting out there. Bart recently hired a new general manager who decided to start a listening tour to find out what riders really want. Anything you want to share? So what did he hear? And what's he plan to do about it? That's our next stop. <laughs>